this is going to be the first of the Food Dark series. And all of them, over the course of time, will be in the same format. Fehu has an esoteric, an ideographic, and a philosophical or magical meaning. Its esoteric meaning, which relates to its meaning in divination, is mobile property, or otherwise power, what we would call money in, um, in today's day. Money must roll. Mobile property. Its ideographic meaning is also that. The horns of bovine livestock. It's Galder. All its keywords. No, uh, the keywords and the stata, they will be in the description and I will pin the keywords on the on the top comments. Now what this rune represents is the very raw archetypical energy of motion, expansive motion, and that is not just here in our world, but that is in the magical world, in the multiverse, the nine worlds of the Norse cosmology. It is that force that flows south from Ginungaga into the formless void. It is that fire, those sparks of Muspelheim that flow in there. Now that fire is both destructive, but as, as it functioned in the Ginungaga, when it came into contact with an other archetypical force, it became that power that created everything else. Life, the multiverse, the gods, and everything in between. It is thus the very basic force of both fertility and destruction. In its archetypical force, it is the same. Um, which makes it also the... the process of life and death and because it has such meanings that they are related to power be that livestock or money it is also a room that works very well if you want to increase your monetary wealth as a human here in Midgard or anything else that is expansive creative and expansive, for instance, influence could apply, social standing. But at the same time, it can also be used for more esoteric means, like strengthening one's own psychic, magical power that is personal. And maybe it doesn't have anything to do with social standing. Maybe it does. Um, so, in the, in the words of the Norse, or even the Germanics, this would be called Hamingyakum, which can best be described as mobile and transferable magic power. And there is one word that is very close to its meaning, and that is charisma. Or luck, but both are often perhaps the same, even though we call them different in English. In its more esoteric meaning, they might very well be the same thing. You will notice that people who are very uncharismatic often have very, very shitty luck. And people that are very charismatic have a lot of good luck. Hamingya. Now, this luck 
or this magical power or charisma can be transferred to another person by being in proximity to that person. Another person can literally, uh, I don't mean this in a bad way, but leech of the charisma of somebody else. And this can be voluntary, the transference, or not. Luckily, it's easy to stop if it is not voluntary. Um, this, this makes it also relatable to ener energetic vampirism, in a way. Well, not related to, but that's what I mean with the transference of Hamingya, or Charisma. <coughs> but basically, it is the rune of mobile property and anything that is expansive and creative. In, and when we talk about psychic abilities, or just to, to use this room to increase your own magical ability, your potency, the potential for it. This, this can also be transferred to an object. For instance, you can enchant an object in such a way that it adds to your own Hamingya. Or you can use it to transfer to an object, object that diminishes another one's Hamingya. Now that goes into the realm of cursing and I don't want to get into it with this series. Unless it's appropriate, but in this case it is not. But it could be used in that way. Everything depends on intention after all. Now, in there is also a, a mythological, um, a mythological, um, how do I say this, imagery attached to this rune. That if you were to see the power of this rune in action with your two physical eyes, it would be like that otherworldly glow that people sometimes see around fairy hills or fairy fortresses. It would be that. It is something intangible and yet absolutely necessary for creating anything or for expanding anything. And it is very archetypical, so it stands completely loose from morality. Nothing to do with it. And that is something that will repeat in, in this series, that evil and good doesn't exist. And it's not, it should never be looked at it that way. Now, if you, as I said earlier, for instance, want to enchant an object, let's say this, this cap here, I want to enchant this object in such a way that it will bring me good friends. I would use this, the rune fell in a magical working in order to transfer that intent into this object and then keep it with me so that I may attract good friends to me. Which, which is, of course, to do with the essence of this rune in its magical working, which is the expansion of, in this case, my social circle, from which other creative processes may emerge. And I think I have set it all with that. It is basically the archetypical raw energy of motion and expansion, which in the very practical term is power, money, magical potency or hamingya, charisma, or livestock. And that concludes the end of the first one.